Good afternoon from Sacred Space at Titania's Realm. It's uh, still the 14th of October 2024 and the time is 3.39pm Monday. We got cut off, um, you know, in the first few pages of uh, reading from, uh, what, were, what were we reading? I've got to think of the title now. Shiva, that's right. Shiva and Sati. And uh, it's very annoying because I was just getting into the flow of it and, um, you know, getting my uh, my reading juices all stirred up and I was getting all passionate and then blip we went. So I had to bring the laptop back out into the garden and plug us in and, yeah, even threw on a bit of lipstick because I, I look like a corpse today. I don't, look, I don't look well at all. I don't actually feel well at all. But. Say la vie, baby. It's every day is a day and it's gorgeous out here and, you know, I'm living my best life. Living my best life one day at a time. Sweet Moses, or in this case, sweet Brahma. So um, it is what it is and uh, I'm going with the flow and I'm riding with my homies and I'm looking forward to dancing this weekend. So I need to build up some energy for that. and um, But other than that, it's all, you know, it's all a little bit juicy and saucy and scintillating and exciting. I don't know what, what's exciting about sitting alone in your sacred space garden with your bird, but I feel kind of excited in a way. I don't know why. But I'll have to go with it, won't I? Got to go with the... Um, spiritual um, epithets and nurturances that I've been receiving a lot lately since my near, near death kind of I don't know if it was really a near death but since I had that breathing issue on the 10th or the 11th of July it's been a very spiritually charged kind of vibe I've had to ride and I'm looking forward to riding all the darkness out and riding more light, peace and joy and perhaps even a love partner at the appointed time. You know, if the gods allow it. They've never allowed it before. They've only ever sent me, um, yeah, false lovers or fake friends or trickster, trickster gods or trickster spirits. It's been a bit hard been a bit hard going the last 59 and a half years but the two days over my 59 and a half year so I've got six more months to go till I'm 60 and if the gods let me live so long maybe maybe I will manifest my my beautiful life after all who knows I certainly don't but um I'm going with the going with the flow, putting one foot in front of the other, and it, at times dancing like a wild berserker on acid, without the acid, just on my own spirit energy alone, and uh, ably enabled by a few Jack Daniels, of course, but not too many because I've got to guard my health. But anyway, I'm um, I'm I'm alive and I'm flourishing in my own small corner of Brisbane hellscape and um, you know it is what it is so we were up to the part where Brahma was um Brahma had, Daksha's sweat had produced a splendid woman which Daksha gave her to Karma as a wife and called this first wife Rati, which means delight. And then it goes on, I'll carry on with the rest of the page. Slight repetition, but just for the sake of cohesion, my darlings. Cohesion and congruency and holding things in the sacred trust and the sacred trust. Mama T doesn't do confusion, lies and deception. But if you want to give me a breakdown, 
we behave like that and if I end up having a breakdown over all the bullshit bing bam boom baby those kinds of people don't stay in my in the circle for very long um, I cannot stand like I really loved early in the story when even Brahma said where was it he saw me have a little wry smile that he too had to cleave to the truth even though it took away some of his powers where was it now Ah, yes. He spoke the truth even if it meant that his own powers might be lessened. That's how I roll, baby. Maybe I'm a Brahmin too. <laughs> Interestingly, my, uh, my former lover from 24 years ago, well, I met him 26 years ago. He was a Brahmin as well as a Orthodox Jew, which is a bit weird. So, um, yes, very good at manipulating energy too, because he was a homeopath as well. Let's be real here though, he was actually a psychopath. I'm a psychopath magnet, and uh, it's because I come from a long line of psychopaths, so they see me and they immediately recognise me as family, even though I'm the black sheep of my family. I'm not rotten, and I'm not evil, I'm not a narcopath, and I'm not an asshole. although I felt a bit of an asshole not observing Yom Kippur this year, but if I remember correctly, I didn't observe it last year either. I haven't observed it since I went to the temple here in Brisbane, my former you know, congregation, and um, got haunted by my mother's ghost having to call out her name at Yuzkor, and and uh, I wrote, and this caused the memorial service that gets read on Day of Atonement. And I, I wrote them a nice email and said, could you please remove my non-Jewish mother from the list because it's triggering for me. And they point blank refused. So I thought, right, I'll never set foot in that temple again. And I was thinking about it this morning. I probably won't observe Yom Kippur again unless I leave Brisbane completely and go to another city or country where um, I won't feel quite so triggered or haunted or hammered down by negative, destructive angels, aka demons, on that holiest of day. And I was feeling deeply guilty about my, um, my expression of my soul on Yom Kippur, and, uh, but then I was reminded by the spirits that um, Hashem's not too angry with me even though I honoured the old gods and my heathenish ways because I did a very kind thing for that drug-fucked gay guy by A, giving him the time of day, B, walking with him, C, even putting my arm around him and hugging him as if he was a friend, and D, buying him something to eat, although he had actually she offered to buy me a soft drink first, so, which he did. He bought the drinks and I bought our bit of food that we shared. So it was um, it was my kind of spiritual gift um, on the holiest day of Jewish year. And um, it is what it is, babies. I'm a bit weird like that. But anyway, let us continue. Let us continue. At last, Brahma was cleansed of his lust. Oh, that's always such a relief when you're cleansed of lust. There's nothing worse than lusting for people that just hold you in utter contempt. Or even worse, loving them deeply and truly and being held in contempt. But I too have walked that path many, many times. So it's, um, it's a pain that never quite goes away. Anyway, let me continue. It's not about me, the story, but of course the gods perfectly mirror human nature at times and vice versa because ultimately all is one and everything is connected and quantum entanglement and spooky action at a distance and 
the archetypes are the same like archetypes throughout all world mythologies and religions just given different names and maybe slightly different cultural motifs but the archetypes remain pretty much the same humans we're magical and we're not being complete genocidal assholes to each other it's enough to make the gods weep and withdraw but anyway where was I? I'll repeat that sentence. At last, Brahma was cleansed of his lust. Shiva then withdrew to his place of meditation. Let me just see where I'm at here. Uh -huh, yes, I'm uploading part one. But the sting of Shiva's words did not, did not leave Brahma. Brahma had been rebuked before his holy sons. He burned with humiliation. Why is it that Shiva is not moved by a woman? He fumed. If Shiva continues to remain aloof from all the universe, how will he be able to carry out his appointed tasks? If he remains forever in a rock-like state, meditation and no cookies here how will he be able to destroy the enemies of the earth when a renewal is necessary cookie likes to listen to mama read too charlie as brahma came out of his meditations he saw the young god of love karma joyfully united with his beautiful Rati. And he said to them, How blissful and radiant you are. What joy there is in seeing you together. You must go to the mountain tops where Shiva lives and set him on fire with love so that he too may take a wife and join us in the eternal dance of the universe. Karma answered, If you order it, I will go. But if I succeed in stirring the rock like Shiva, where is there a woman who can arouse him? Nowhere do I see such a woman for Shiva. I shall create her, Brahma replied. Now go. When Karma had departed, Brahma spoke with Daksha and said, Who can Shiva's future wife be? What possible woman does he hold in the depths of his spirit? Yet there is only one. Maya, the world of illusion, the enchantress, Shakti, the energy of the world. She can take any form. She is the one who will beguile him. Daksha, you must go and with proper offerings persuade Shakti to be born as your daughter and then to become Shiva's bride. Hmm. Daksha understood the wisdom of Brahma's suggestion and took himself to the other side of the divine milky ocean, across the timeless sea where Vishnu sleeps and dreams, the dream of the world. You're okay, Charlie. There he prepared himself to make offerings to the great goddess who is the manifestation of Vishnu's dream. With the image of the enchantress in his mind and heart, he went into deep meditation so that by his heat he could animate her image and set the goddess with his own eyes. For 36 
thousand years, Daksha remained in a state of prolonged concentration, creating his vision of the goddess. It's a long time. While Daksha sat meditating, the mighty Brahma went to the holy mountain Mandara, and there, for thirty six thousand years, he prays with potent syllables the mother of the universe. He called to Shakti in her myriad forms. Maya, goddess beyond reach, enchantress, everlasting, divine drunkenness of dream, lady of the spheres, smoky one, weaver of the world, wisdom, compassion, delusion, daughter of the mountain, earth-born, youngest one, golden one, peace of the night, mother of the world, giver of food, shining one, wanton-eyed, auspicious, one who releases, three-eyed, at the end of 36,000 years, Maya appeared, standing on the back of her tawny lion. She was dark and slender, with her hair hanging freely. Brahma greeted her. O oh Kali, dark one, I have called to you because of your power, the Lord of spirits, Shiva, remains solitary. If he takes no wife, the creation of the world will not continue in its appointed course. Only you can entice and bewitch him into the eternal dance of the universe. Kali answered, what you say is true. I am the divine energy of the universe. From me comes the food of the universe. All that has breath. All that speaks. I make each one what he or she wishes to be. Great and powerful weak and helpless, passionate, full of dreams. For the sake of the creation, I will agree to entice Shiva. Then Shiva meditates and goes into the innermost kernel of his heart. He will find me there. I will have melted into his heart. She disappeared, and on the other side of time, Daksha saw the goddess, and she reappeared to him on her lion. Her body was dark, her breasts were mighty. Daksha bowed to her and announced his wish. She answered, For the sake of the well-being of creation, I will grant your wish. I will become your daughter and the wife of Shiva. But if, for a single moment, you lose proper reverence for me, I will not remain on earth. I will leave my body, whether I am happy or not. You go, you go, Carly. You tell them how it is, baby girls. Well, she's not my baby girl. I must give her due reverence.
but you feel my vibe, don't you, darlings? I've been there. I've been in that headspace before. In fact, quite recently, as a matter of fact. <laughs> but Carly and the other gods won't allow me to leave this earth. They want me to have my happy ever after. It's getting a bit mad and delusional, but this is what happens when you're the daughter of the gods. you just got to ride that vibe. Keep riding that vibe, babies. <laughs> anyway. Daksha, return to earth, full of joy. That his wish had been granted. He married a beautiful woman, Virani, the daughter of Virana, the fragrant grass. Virani conceived at once from the vision of Daksha's soul. Oh, don't you love when that happens? No faffing around, no playing with nonsense, no IVF, no tears and frustration and grief just you're pregnant you didn't even know it I didn't know I was pregnant with Jasmine for two months actually she slipped third base that little one never mind never mind meant to be regardless of how she feels about her mother when the child was born and she was a girl flowers descended from the heavens Virani did not know that her daughter was Maya, the mother of the universe, the great enchantress. She only knew a little infant was wailing, and she took the child in her arms and gave her her breast to suck. The child grew, and she played with her small friends. She delighted in drawing pictures of Shiva, and when she sang, the childlike songs were of her love for Shiva. Shiva was always in her heart. Her father gave her the most beautiful name. He called her Sati, which means she who is. When she became a young woman, she went to the mountains to meditate. Then Brahma, with his divine wife, Savitri, and Vishnu, with his divine wife, Lakshmi, went to visit Shiva in his place of peace. When Shiva saw them, a strange thing happened. The paragon of peace was moved by the radiance of and bliss in the faces of the two joyous couples, and the smallest trace of a desire for a woman entered his heart. We have come to you, Brahma said, for the sake of the creation. I am the creator. Vishnu is the preserver. preserver. And you are the destroyer. But if you remain in your state of rock-like meditation, how will you understand passion and be able to destroy when the moment the destruction arrives? We have come for the sake of creation to ask you to take a wife. Shiva said, At every moment I see the supreme eternity of the true being. At every moment I keep it before me. Where is the woman who is as consecrated to my work as I am and as dedicated to the highest vision? If, for the sake of the universe, I were to take a wife, where is there a woman who would be capable of absorbing my incandescent power shock by shock? Brahma was elated. He said, 
she exists at this moment. She is waiting for you and longing for you. Her name is Sati. The two couples left Shiva. Shiva descended to earth, to the place where Sati was meditating alone in the mountains. When she opened her eyes and saw Shiva standing before her, she was flooded with joy. She fell to the ground and worshipped his feet. When Shiva saw Sati, he was pleased. What do you wish? he asked. Speak. But Sati could not utter a word. She could not speak before the one who had moved her heart since she was a child. Shiva was filled with longing to hear her voice and at that very moment Kama, the god of love, drew his arrow and shot Shiva through the heart. Shiva shuddered. He forgot his true being and cried, Be my wife! Sati, frightened by the great god, trembled and said, Speak to my father. Then she ran toward her home. Shiva, the paragon of peace, returned to his mountain abode. He directed his thoughts toward Brahma, and Brahma appeared. Brahma, he said, you have won. I am powerless. Maya has caught me in her web. Now all I can be, all I can become, is Sati's husband. You must arrange it. Brahma, speak to Daksha. Ask him if he will permit me to marry Sati. So the wedding of Shiva and Sati was arranged. It was held on the day and at the hour that was most propitious according to the stars. The bridegroom Shiva arrived accompanied by divine musicians and dancing girls. He wore a loincloth of tiger skins and Oh Hello, cheeky bird. And for decoration It's not like the minor birds to swoop me. Naughty ones. And for decoration a live serpent draped from his left shoulder to his right hip. It's because I've got this turkey at my feet who's also hiding from the minor birds. Oh, bless. It, oh, just picked at my toes. Naughty bird. That really hurt. <laughs> I'm under attack from the birds. It's Hitchcock's birds game. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to keep my feet up. No, I don't mind you being at my feet, but don't pick at me, bad bird. No. To get a spray bottle and spray him, I think. He thinks my toes are worms, probably, because they're long and white and kind of ugly. But anyway. Come, come. Come, come, Charlie. Where was I? Where was I when I got rudely interrupted by being bitten by a bush turkey? The love of all the birds. Ah, right. He wore a loincloth of tiger skins and for decoration, a live serpent draped from his left shoulder to his right hip. Oh! He did it again, the little basket. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, that's not funny now. Once was bad, twice was mildly annoying three times why are you a 
attacking me, you little mon monster. Go. Bad bird. Ugh. Have to live in harmony at sacred space, or you'll have to be chased away by the water spray. Naughty one. Good grief. Honestly. I'm all paranoid about where to put my feet now. You really caught me with beauty too. Ouch. Anyway, where was I? Where's that bird? Charlie, where's that bird egg? Who expects to be attacked by a wild bush turkey? It's ridiculous. In his hair rested the young moon and a garland of skulls. Indeed. The lesser and greater spirits, all incarnations of the great Shiva, danced. The dancing girls danced. Flowers pour down. Here he comes, a little munchkin. I'm going to cop him. We're going to cop him a beauty. Are you ready? I've got to be careful because I've got all my electrical wires here too. He's taking it out on me because the Indian mine is picking on him. It's like, it's not my fault that the Indian miners are picking on him. Oh my goodness. Where was I? The dancing girls danced and flowers poured down from the heavens. Karma delighted Shiva and maddened him. The whole firmament was gay and brilliant, blown with sweet scented breezes. All the trees were in blossom. Solemnly, Shiva received Sati's hand. The gods gave praise, reciting the verses from the holy Vedas. Then Vishnu spoke and blessed Shiva and Sati, saying, Sati gleams blue-black and Shiva is fair. Together you will protect gods and mortals. Shiva, you will slay the enemies as they arise in the course of history and if anyone lets his desire rest on Sati, you will destroy that one without a thought. So be it, said Shiva. And Sati laughed a joyous, merry laugh. Her laughter caught the air of Brahma and Brahma turned and looked at Sati. The god of love entered his veins, and Brahma began to smoke with desire for Sati. Mm -mm -mm. Bing, bang, boom, baby. Great energy in the form of flames and fire streamed out of Brahma's body and a black thundercloud spread out over the earth, stretching to the rim of the world. Brahma could not take his eyes from Sati. The holy assembly stared at Brahma in horror. When Shiva saw how Brahma's eyes Feasted on Sati, he cried out, I shall kill you. He lifted his spear to throw at Brahma, but Vishnu quickly rushed between them and held Shiva's arm. You shall not kill the creator of the world, Vishnu said. He is the one who created Sati. Brahma is the one who prepared her for you. I will keep my vow, Shiva cried. I will create another creator, but no one will look at Sati like that. Let me go. Take away your hand. But Vishnu said, You may not kill the creator. He is yourself. You and he are one. What are you saying? Shiva asked. Everyone can see I am Shima. Shiva 
and that is Brahma. Vishnu said, Maya has tricked you and you no longer see your true being. Close your eyes, he said to Shiva, so that you may find your center. And before the holy assembly, Shiva closed his eyes and sank into himself. His body began to glow and the light was so dazzling no one could look. Maya withdrew from his body. Then Vishnu, like the light of heaven, poured into the body of Shiva and showed him the procession and history of the world. Come, come. This way, this way, child. Come, come. Good girl. Good girl. So, the history of the world, my darlings. At first, all was darkness. There was nothing. No day or night, heaven or earth. There was time. Time unfolded in the great cosmic egg. The egg which grew in the waters, enveloped by winds and flame and space. Inside the egg, Shiva saw the creator, white as a white lotus, streaming white, and the creator was opening up the world. The creator began to divide. The top part was Brahma. The middle dark blue part was Vishnu, and the crystalline under part was Shiva. They melted from one to another. The three grew out of each other. They flowed into each other and the egg rocked in the water and burst open. And the shell arranged itself into bounding mountains. Shiva became distinct from Brahma and from Vishnu. Then Shiva saw Kama and the Holy Ones, the sun, the moon, the clouds, the fish, the turtles, the monsters, and men. And then he saw the most beautiful woman of all. She was Sati. And then he saw how Maya, in the figure of Lakshmi was enchanting Vishnu and how Maya in the figure of Savitri was enchanting Brahma even while he was enchanted by Sati. And he saw the future. He saw Sati and himself on a mountain pinnacle, enlaced in love. Yes, my darling girl, enlaced in love, my beautiful one. You and me, my little birdie baby. My little angel face. My sweet little feathery one. My gorgeous girl. My gift from the gods. Mm. And from the Annan. And Jenny and Bren Brenda, let's be fair, always have to be fair. We must always tell the truth, even if it lessens our power. I know, I know, you love me a lot. I know that, even though she bites me occasionally, and nibbles, and chomps, she loves the mama too. Where were we? Sorry. Oh, that's right. We were enlaced in love. He saw Sati take off her body and disappear and be born again as a daughter of Manaka, queen of the mountain. 
After a long separation, he found her and they were joined together again. Oscar said us a bit better here. All this Shiva saw in an instant. You're going to do a poo, aren't you? How about you do a poo over there? No? Then Vishnu withdrew from Shiva's body and Shiva came out of his trance. All he could see was the lovely Sati. He lifted Sati onto his white bull, Nandi, and they rode to the tops of the Himalayan peaks. There they dwelt and there they played night and day, and all their play was love. Oh, I. Hmm. Did I ever have a lover that was playful and loving so that all our play was love? I can't remember. It's been so many eons. Oh, blessed be Tony Harris. All is well. All is love and light and truth and honour, sweetness and affection and kindness. The right souls see you. And what's not meant to be yours is are not meant to be yours. Say so the babies. We've got Charlie though, haven't we? We've got Charlie. We've got Charlie. And the sweet little baby. She's like, what are you banging on about now, Mama T? Oh, you know, just my usual bathos and pathos and lovesickness and, you know, it's all, it's all illusion. It's all Maya. If we wave a magic wand, we can make it all go away. I can make myself go away. If I had the money, I'd be gone by now. Bing, bang, boom, baby. I don't know where I'd be. Maybe in Machu Picchu. Maybe in um, Bolivia. Maybe somewhere in the Amazon, trying to get swallowed by an anaconda because it happened to my grandfather's shipmate and I was like, I don't know, no I don't want that to happen to me, I've had enough snakes in my life, God's help us, where, could I, where else could I be, I could be in Paris, let us sing, ready, I love Paris in the springtime, I love Paris in the fall, I love Paris, oh why, oh why do I love Paris, because my love is there. I doubt it, Frenchman, never faithful either, darling. But also, I've never been to Paris, but it's one of the places I aspire to go one day. My daughter had a fabulous time when she was there. She really did. She went down going all, looking at all the houses that she found the house that belonged to Renoir and she went to Chartres and she went saw Notre Dame and she had a fabulous time. To be honest, I was an ever, ever so tiny bit. I don't get jealous. I don't believe in envy. I think it's a destructive, negative, foul, pustulant force. But I must admit, I did get a little bit jealous when she said she got to see all the beautiful sights and oh well in my mind I'm free and I can be anywhere in a millisecond babies <sighs> shake it out where were we? oh yes loving play all their play was love Shiva went and gathered wild flowers for Sati he let down her night dark hair and played with it. Oh. Then he knotted it up. Pardon me. So that he might loosen it again. <laughs> he painted her pretty feet with scarlet lac so that he might hold them in his hands. And he whispered in her ear what he might have said aloud. But in this way, he could be closer to her. 
in the bowers and by the banks of high mountain streams. They tasted each other and played with each other and loved each other. Don't you poo on me again, Charlie. She's going to do it, isn't she? You'll see it before me most of the time. She's that quick. She's that quick. She even put a spot of musk on Sati's beautiful lotus breasts and lifted off her necklaces of pearl and set them back again just to touch her lotus softness. He drew off her bracelets and opened the knots of her clothing and tied them back again. He decked her whole body with chains of flowers and swallowed the nectar of her mouth and their desire for each other never ceased. The fountain of their passion was fed by their love and so they loved and nine thousand years passed quickly by. It then happened that Daksha, Sati's father, decided to hold a great offering to the Supreme Being. I'm laughing because Spirit didn't quite say it, but it just gave me this quick flash. He said, when you find your true love in the next dimension, Tanya, 9,000 years of joy and bliss and ecstasy and passion and romance and sweetness will be as a day too. Oh, I hope not. I want to enjoy every moment of every, every moment of it. May it stretch out for eternity. Oh, you didn't know I was romantic, did you? I hide it fairly well. Warrior goddesses, we have to hide these things. Can't be too sappy around the boys and the men and the, you know, the wannabe suitors. We just got to act like we hate them all. But really, really, every now and then we fall in love and mountains crumble into the sea and new islands are born. And so it is. Never mind, my darling. Never mind. It then happened that Daksha, Sati's father, decided to hold a great offering to the Supreme Being. He invited every living being in all the reaches of space, the gods and demons, the spirits, the clouds and mountains, the rivers and oceans, the mortals, beasts and birds, the trees and grasses. Shiva and Sati were the only two creatures in the universe that he did not invite. He thought that Shiva, who meditates among corpses, and carries a skull for a begging bowl, would not be a fitting guest to attend such an offering. And, of course, he could not invite his beloved daughter Sati if he did not invite her husband. Vijaya, 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 I think. The daughter of the sister of Sati went to visit Sati. Shiva had gone off on his bull, Nandi, to perform his evening meditations, and Sati was alone. Dear Vajaya, I just realised what that sounds a little bit like, but no, don't go there, guy friends and girlfriends. I'm telling you, behave. Dear Vijaya, not the other, what you're thinking, because I've got a dirty mind sometimes. Please forgive me. It's been eons. Every now and then it just goes flick. Sati said, you have come by yourself. Where are your sisters? 
they are preparing for the great celebration. All the women in the universe are preparing themselves. I have come to bring you. Are you and Shiva not coming? What celebration? Where? Oh, Sati, have you not been invited? Your father, Daksha, is holding a great offering. Everyone in all the worlds has been invited. Sati was struck as if she had been hit by a bolt of lightning. Anger began to burn in her and her eyes hardened. She said, it is because my husband carries a skull for a begging bowl. And she thought to blast Daksha to ashes with a curse. But then she remembered her words to Daksha. If for a single moment you lose proper reverence for me, I will not remain. I will leave my body whether I am happy or not. I hear you, sister. I hear you. Although a goddess is not my sister, just using, you know, modern parlance, you understand. As Sati's eternal form became visible to her, she thought, I will leave this body. I will not stay. The gods will not have what they wish this time. But one day I will return to Mount Himalaya, Hima, Hima, Himalaya, yes, where I have dwelt so long in happiness with Shiva. And there I will be born as the daughter of Manaka. I will play then I will marry Shiva and complete the work the gods have wished for. With that she closed the nine portals of her body. She withdrew her breath and braced herself. Her life force shot up through her body and ripped through the top of her skull. Her body slumped to the ground. When the gods above saw this, they lifted a universal cry of horror. Vijaya cried, Oh, Sati, Sati, what have I done? What have I said to hurt you? Your poor mother will be shattered by the pain. And how will your heartless father survive? Oh, Sati, you were a mother to me. Sati, I am crying. Oh, Sati. Who will care for Shiva? Shiva! Oh! In his meditations, Shiva heard Vijaya's shriek. He returned at once to their mountain top, where his beloved Sati lay crumbled on the earth. Where are you going, Miss Charlie? She's on a mission. On one of Mama T's missions. She could be anywhere in the next dimension, in the next millisecond. She's going, 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 going. Now she's climbing the little cable over there, so that's okay. He returned at once to their mountain top where his beloved Sati lay crumpled on the earth. Mr. Crow, don't, don't, don't attack my Charlie. There will be retribution of the worst kind if you attack my Charlie. He thought about it too, little bugger. Yes, I know. That was a bit, was a little bit close, wasn't it? By the gods. The birds are really quite aggressive today. I don't know why that is. Must be getting a storm, some shift in the weather. They're not normally like this. They're usually much more... Um, Peaceful and lovely and sweet, dead goddess. But love would not allow him to believe she was dead. Gently, he stroked her cheek. 
You are asleep? he asked. Love, what has sent you to sleep? Sati, wake up, speak. Then Vijaya told Shiva that something inside of Sati seemed to have burst when he was told that neither she nor Shiva had been invited to the great offering Daksha was giving. Shiva's whole being was filled with wrath. He transported himself to the place where the great sacrifice was being held. There he saw the living creatures who had been invited, the gods, the planets, the beasts, the fish, the worms, the seasons, the ages of the world, and each was reverently carrying out his role. Only he and Sati had not been invited. It's just plain bloody rude if you ask me. But, you know, it's a stuff of fairy tales. There's always one outcast, usually Mama T, who wreaks vengeance quietly in the corner, seething with rage. But I haven't been outcast. I haven't been outcast in the last 14 months. Thank you to my beautiful Brooklyn Standard, who welcomed me and even made me a VIP. Don't know what I did to deserve that, but thank you as always, my beautiful ones. I love you all. I do. I do. Shiva stepped into the sacred place to destroy the offering. At the sight of Shiva, the young animal that was about to be sacrificed transformed itself into a gazelle and fled to the heavens. Shiva followed and the gazelle found refuge in Brahma's realm. Shiva followed and the gazelle fled to Vishnu's realm. Shiva followed. At last, the frightened animal darted back to earth and disappeared on a mountain top, hiding itself in Sati's corpse. When Shiva stood once again before the corpse of Sati, he forgot the offering. He saw only Sati. And then a great cry of grief came from his throat and his heart broke. He looked at Sati, at her lips, at her cheeks, her beautiful dark hair. Then her laughter, her kindness, her touch rushed through him and he broke with grief like a common mortal. He flung himself on the ground, he crouched by her corpse. He got up and ran and returned and reached out and touched her body. It was stiff and cold. He caressed her forehead and cheeks and lips. He undid her clothing and then fastened it again. He picked Sati up in his arms and began to walk. He sobbed and walked and sobbed and he would not let her go. Real love, baby boys and girls. It's good when you can get it, isn't it? Oh, Mama T must let it go. Let go, let God. Peace in my heart. True love manifests in its own divine timing chosen by the gods. Not lacklustre curs saying, in their mother's presence, I want you. And then they wonder why I pretended to circle their nipples because dishonour me, it's 
bit like dishonouring Sati, am I right? I've earned my right to have this much pride and arrogance after decades and decades of humiliation, vilification, slander, slaughter, molestation, and sexual assaults, and even the occasional rape. How dare anyone, dare, dare defile me. That's why I'm an asexual celibate, hoping to blossom out again with a true love one day. But the reality is, while they play games like that, I can never trust and love with anyone, any mortal man, anywhere in the known cosmos. So that was probably done deliberately, you know, to set me back on my haunches and make me give up on love. Sadistic is what it is. They don't know my heart. My heart never gives up on love. My heart is eternally loving, even in its Kali, goddess Kali, off with their heads, wrathful ways at times. Even that sometimes is an expression of love. Cruel, vapid, evil men don't deserve to be in my energy ever, ever, because I had a lifetime of it and I'm done. But that one, that one, never mind my darlings, I don't know what I'm talking about, I had to leave my body a little bit just thinking about it, did you notice, Mama T went on a little space walk, space man, <laughs> I always wanted to go to space now. Anyway, it's all good, my darlings. The greatest love of my life is available to me at all times. And he's magical, and he's beautiful, and he's heartfelt, and he's mine. I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. Very likely not human, and I'll be reunited with that energy one day. Maybe unless they cast me down to the underworld to let me be feasted on by vultures as if I haven't been feasted on by vultures enough in this incarnation, am I right? But time will tell and the gods will decree and they might even lift me back up on my dancing queen feet and make me do the whirling dervish and surprise me one day to my beautiful one, my beautiful man out there somewhere. It's enough to give you a, whew, a frisson. Whew, I'm a little bit excited just at the merest concept of it. But anyway... Life is beautiful, Rechaim, and there are good and kind people out in the world. I meet them every weekend, so along with the tricksters and the game players and the setups. I meet the good people too, like the sweet Māori man who's so enchanted by me, he just looks at me like this. I caught him, that's why I was smiling earlier thinking about it. I don't know his name. It's a friend to Ness, Ness knows her. It's very sweet. He always looks sort of a bit boyish almost. He's a sweetheart. I caught him when I was in my full trance state. Because Māori men understand. They understand magic and spirituality and awe. Because it's embedded in their culture. It is. Powerful. Anyway, I caught him peering at me from the opposite end of the stage, just giving me this sweet little look. And he sort of leant out at this to catch my eye. And I'm, I'm meanwhile, while he's doing that, I'm doing my crazy, really dervish watch. 
And so my hair is flopping everywhere. And he's just like, and he did this little, gave me this little sweet smile. And my goodness, I fell in love with him in that moment. Not, I don't mean sexually, don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong, Brooklyn Standard. I know you're all dying to know who is going to be my lover one day. You're all waiting with bated breath. You've probably got bets on it by now. Who is the Tanya going to take as a lover? It might not happen in the club. It might be somewhere else I meet someone. So calm your farm. But anyway, I just kind of had to laugh because it was so delightful. Not laughing at him, but laughing at the sweetness of it. I'm flipping my hair and going completely wild. There's a sweet little horse just looking at me with such sweetness and almost boyish wonder and admiration. Twice, twice he caught my eye like that and I just nodded. You couldn't tell I was nodding because I was still watching it. <laughs> little bit of a nod. I showed him a little smile. I thought that was delightful. Someone who understands my shamanistic mad moshing and my mad dance and my mad spirit. So there you go. Beautiful to you my friend. <clears throat> Vishnu and the Brahma watched Shiva, and they knew that Sati's corpse would never decay as long as Shiva held her. And so, by their craft, Brahma and Vishnu hid in Sati's corpse, and as Shiva walked, they dismembered Sati's body. Her two feet fell and the place that they fell is called the mountain of the goddess. Not far from there, her two ankles fell. And then to the east, no, the east is over here, Tanya. Get with the program. <laughs> that was cute how I was pointed to the west. And then to the east, her womb fell. Not nice, being there, done that, got the t-shirt. And thereby, her navel. Then, her two breasts, together with her gold necklace, and her shoulders, and her neck. I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to do something about my neck, but it's always been short and squat and ugly. But anyway, I don't know why people find me attractive. I don't find myself all that attractive. I mean, I look okay when I slap on makeup and throw in a bit of the glitter and razzle dazzle that baby, but I don't, know, I don't know what people see in me, really. I mean, look at the Slavic face. Oh, the Russians, however. Russia, men and women go wild when they see me because they think I'm Russian. And they run up to me and they start dobra, 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 and t speaking to me in Russian. And um, or Dobras, the Serbians do that too. Dobras are Serbians and Croatians. But the Russians go mad for me. Maybe I should move to Russia. It's, might be my place, you know, where I belong, where I'm loved. And it's too bloody cold in winter, though. The cold would kill me. So no. Every place a part of her fell became a sacred place and a blessing to the children of the world. When her head fell, Shiva stopped. He stood and stared and broke into a terrible groan of pain. Someone said England. No, England's too cold too. It snows in England. Can't be where it snows. Anyway, Mama T's not going anywhere except in her imagination. Let's face it. The gods at once gathered around Shiva and wished to comfort him. But Shiva was ashamed and transformed himself into a rock in the shape of a lingam. The gods 
praised Shiva, hoping he would return to himself. Light of all lights, in your form of lingam, you are the highest being. You understand the impermanence of all things. Shiva, we tremble before your grief. Shiva, let your anguish pass. Shiva, Shiva remembered his highest self, which had always been the object of his meditations, but he could not bring his powers into focus. His grief was overwhelming. Shiva opened his eyes. He saw Brahma and said, Brahma, what am I to do? And Brahma answered, you must let go. So you must let your pain go. You must let your anguish go. It is only Maya. Return to your true being, indeed. In the eternal dance of the universe, you will find Sati again. Just like I'll find Sola Garden, Socks and Sophie and Vinny and all my other beloveds again one day will be reunited. Oh, it's a sweet thought, isn't it? Let's hope it's true. And Shiva said, Brahma, I can do nothing. What about me, he says, my enemy, my ghost? You're not included in that. The chutzpah of it. The chutzpah. You have to laugh, though. It's kind of, it's reached the point where it's gotten a bit funny. It's a little bit funny. This viewed inside. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next line? Something I can hardly hide. Your gift is my song and this one's for you. You did that, didn't you, you schmuck? All right, back, back to the other dimension you go. Who invited you to this party of consciousness? And Shiva said, Brahma, I can do nothing. Brahma, stay with me, he's laughing, until the pain passes, until I come up. I have the one for you, he says. You liar, just go, go, go. Geisha, geisha. Until I come up from the ocean of my loss. Do not leave me, Brahma. Stay with me and give me comfort. And Brahma said, so be it. Blind with suffering, Shiva took Brahma's hand and the two gods departed into the solitude of the mountains. They walked until they came to a lake which was surrounded by holy hermits who were meditating. The lake was clear, quiet, and peaceful. Yes, Bobo, did you say? A little blessed one? Come. Bobo's probably here too. Shiva sat by the lake and looked into the waters. He saw fish swimming, darting in and out among the lotus stems. Beside the waters of this lake, Shiva found his rest. Stop it now, you can, you, no, I do not give you permission. <coughs> Boundaries. I apologise for that. It's, it's given me a complete dizzy spell. The energy is so intense. But no, he's not allowed. He's never allowed. I do not give permission. It's jerked my chain enough as it is. Beside the waters of this lake, Shiva found his rest. He released himself from his fixation. He released himself from his suffering and centred himself in the eternity of his true being. That's what you need to do, Davidson. 
instead of haunting me because you used to be a Brahmin, because I'm reading about Brahma. All right? Just go away. That's your only connection to me. Off you go. Tutor pit, tally high, and all that jazz. Shiva remained in deep peace and meditation. Yes, I know. And Sati was reborn as Parvati, the daughter of Manaka, queen of the mountain. Yes, I know. You want cuddles now, child. By her long, sustained meditations, Parvati was able to stir Shiva from his deep place of peace and bring him to her so that they were united in love. Once again, the rebirth of the world was assured. The end. I apologise for those spiritual interferences and violations of my sacred mental space. But he's stubborn. He's stubborn. Wants me to have my true love. Well, how's as if he has control over that anyway. I mean the chutzpah of it. The man who used to completely humiliate me at Kabbalah classes and community functions and tried to kill me by the way. He has no say over what goes on with my uh, vagina or who ploughs my vulva. There's no say whatsoever. Only my truest, deepest lover will ever be invited into my body ever again. Certainly not ghosts of dead Israeli lover men for the love of all the gods. I mean, you almost have to laugh, don't you? It's a bit weird, comical. Stop scaring my friends away from me too, you mother bugger. That's how I talk to them. You have no right to scare my true friends who actually adore me away. They've done nothing wrong but be friends. And I value their friendship. Deeply. Very deeply. Because they're good men. Very good men. They've been nothing but good and kind to me. Anyway, they're all powerful magicians and witches and pagans in their own right. So they're not going to take any crap from you, Davidson, or any of your ilk. Find your vibe, find your tribe, am I right? I'm in good company. I'm in very good company. Loved and protected wholeheartedly and sincerely. A little bit too much protected. I don't want to interfere in my love life, but, you know, Sometimes that might be a good thing. Look at the fucking nightmarish decades long mess that was left by that one. 20, what did I say earlier? 24 years, 2024. It, it, I don't consider it human anymore. It died in 2016. utterly destroyed me in 2001 I think was the final the final it took a lot to kill that love he took so much to kill that love he knows it too he knows what it took to kill my love married again with three children he haunts me he should be haunting her she's his true lover his true beloved one is she not well, one doesn't know. No, one will never know the truth. But anyway, I'm not in love with him. That's why it's so fucking weird that he still bothers me after all these decades. Had bigger and better love since then. Couldn't certainly couldn't be any worse, could they? Well, no, 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 no. Let's rewind a little bit. Can always be worse, babies. I had worse too. But. If you're going to be on the sliding scale of how 
good and bad or how horrific your love life is, he was in the top ten of horrific by all the gods. I wonder why my guides and angels and the Holy One lets him slip through and talk to me the way he does even during my videos. It's odd, isn't it? It's not normal. It's not usually a done thing either. Even for mediums, you have, they have to wait till you open up to them with protective prayers and invite them in. Which is why I get so irritated and annoyed when he jumps in like that. It's forbidden. It's foreboden. It's not okay. Still around, by the way. I can feel his energy behind me, standing right behind me. Kind of oppressing me a little bit. You can back off the bat as well. It's not okay. Honestly. Speak to me of love, Tanya. No. My love for you was slaughtered many, many years ago. Now, it wouldn't matter if I did love you still. It's ancient, ancient history. I reserve my love for a man worthy of my love and my light and my power and my heart, my soul like the song of Solomon must be out there somewhere mine, my beloved one gifted me such sweetness and kindness, especially when my dog died. It's all very odd. It's all very odd what's going on in our world now. But I'm monitoring it. I'm monitoring it, I'm observing, I'm watching, and I'm waiting for everyone to come back online into some kind of equilibrium again. I need all my men and women to be ready for anything at any given time, not in a state of like nervous, hypervigilant, terrorised, but just to be grounded in their own being and ready because what I'm seeing with our world is complete disarray and even my beloved ones. Playing little trickster games with my heart. Well, one day. I may get an explanation as to what that was really about one day, maybe, if they have the cojones. Those little Indian minor birds are all... Oh! That was um, special, Charlie. Yes. You think kissy kissy? It's the time. It's nearly time for you to go to bed. I can't believe I got pecked on my toes twice by that big turkey with his big beak. Yowza. Didn't seem to draw blood though, but it's not a pleasant experience. <laughs> anyway, my beloved ones, my beautiful people of Earth, and all other interdimensional entities, even that one, since he's not going to go away, and I can't get rid of him. I've tried exorcisms, I've tried <sighs> being reasonable, I've tried quite a bit actually, but um, wants to be my protector and protect me, so be it. Kind of owes me big time, so, so be it. And um, you know, all interdimensional entities 
go in peace. Shalom. Blessed be. Good afternoon from Titania's realm, sacred space, big agape love, big arahanui love. Can't get much bigger than arahanui, which means lots and lots of love. And uh, yes, aloha in Hawaiian, Liebe in German, amour en français, and um, yes, on it goes and on it goes. I love you all. Good afternoon. Goodbye.